Hey, man, how awesome was that for you? And you were such a big part of it as a leader and a player, but how awesome was that for you last year? It was so awesome for all of us. I'd say it's probably my uh, probably the, mo- the most fun I've ever had playing ball, just to, just to be in our locker room. And obviously we got a, a great coach in, in Doug, man, but uh, just that environment and the team, it's, it's been fun. Uh, I can't even put into words what it means, but – to end on, end on the way we did, you know, in the divisional round, it's, it's a lot more work to do to get where we're two games away. We don't want to end like that, so we got a lot of work to do to get where we want to go. Well, I got to tell you, and I, and I told Doug this too, uh, I've been around, I've done this a long time. I don't know that I've ever seen a culture change that much from one year to the next. Being in the locker room, being around you guys, being on the plane with you guys, what a difference. And the year before is gone. I'm not trying to bring that back up, but, but the way the culture was last year – it was it was pretty amazing. I thought the change. I really did. Absolutely. I mean, it makes a difference. Um, you know, having having a coach that's been there before, he knows how to relate to his guys. He knows how to communicate with his guys, and that's a big part. Um, but guys, we all just bought in. You know, to what Doug you know tells us, and it's. I mean, like I said, it makes a big difference. Um, and everybody just has the, the right mindset. We just want to win games. The city wants us to win, and you know, the city's behind us, and that's what I really appreciate too. Um, especially those last two home games. I don't know yeah. if you guys got the privilege of being at those last two home oh, yeah. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was something amazing, and um, I'm looking forward to this season. So all the fans that's listening, I want yeah. that uh, <laughs> that first home game better look like that playoff game <laughs> right. against uh, L.A. So well, I'm excited, though. It's going to be it's gonna be a fun year. Yeah, absolutely. Foye said something really interesting last week, Roy, talking about the scheme and how, you know, last year there was, there was some guys that, you know, we're trying to kind of figure out where they were supposed to be and, and with everybody back and that familiarity now that he's like, we're going to be able to disguise things better. We're going to be able to play with the scheme a little bit. Have you sensed that in the early meetings so far that you guys yeah, are having? Absolutely. I mean, the, the first year, you know, with new coaches, you know, you're learning the scheme, you're learning how things work, you're learning each other, you know, playing next to Foyer, playing next to Foley. And um, I got a year with Josh, but in that scheme, it's just different. You got to learn to play with each other and learn how to communicate certain ways. And um, being in second year in this defense, it's somewhat of a review. You know, we're getting back into the things, getting back into the flow. Um, but like you say, you know, the sky isn't better and um, we'll be a lot more comfortable because it's going into the second year. So it's um, it's going to be good for us and, you know, we'll be able to do some little, you know, things here and there. So it's going to be it's going to be good. We're going to have a really good defense. How fast does the offseason go the longer you stay in the league? Whew. I got kids, so <laughs> <laughs> offseason's flying. But, um, no, nah, this offseason's been good. I've had a, I've had a, a lot of time with my family. Um, my oldest is playing ball right now, so spending time with him, getting him ready to play and, um, and picking up golf. Um, been enjoying golf a little bit this offseason. Uh, but, no, it's flying by. And, um, I mean, I to be honest with you, I, I'm not even complaining. I mean – that Kansas City game, I'm, I'm, I'm still looking back and, you know, yeah. thinking about those times. But I'm excited to get back and get back with my guys and get to work. Got a lot of stuff to, to look forward to. Roy Robertson Harris with us, the Jaguar defensive lineman. I'm a big believer that leadership really matters, on-field leadership. But you can't lead unless you're on the field and playing well. I, I'm a big believer in that. I, 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 you were on the field. You had a great year, obviously. But I saw you around Trayvon and Devin Lloyd, and I watched you a lot. Leadership matters. I thought your leadership really mattered. Like, did you take that on? Is that something that you felt like you had to do last year? Uh, vocally, yeah. Um, I'm not a I'm not a big guy that likes to talk too much. Um, yeah. I like to speak positivity into my guys. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with Trey being a young cat, it's helping him along the way. You know, whatever he needs. I'm not a guy that's going to give you direction. Hey, you need to do this, do that. But you know, when I, when you have a question, I'm here to answer that. You know, question. I'm here for you. I'm I'm here to be big bro and just mm-hmm. if you need something, I got you. Um, but yeah, just just being a positive guy around the locker room. You know, trying to make sure I uplift my teammates and and uh, you know during bad situations in the game, um, you don't want to sit there and pouch. You know, pout or be down. You know, it's it's not over to the zeros on on the scoreboard. So. Um, just being a positive guy in there and just making sure guys, for me, I like to lead by example. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to make sure that they see me work. I don't want to tell you, hey, you need to do this, and I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so just leading by example, showing up to work every day and, and um, 
making sure the guys see that I, you know, they can they can follow along and, and mm-hmm. work with me. This defense has three guys that, that are going from that year one to year two, Trayvon, Devin, and Chad. What was that like for you? Did you see a big jump in your play uh, when you didn't have to worry about the offseason with the draft process and things like that? And, and can you shed some light on what those three guys – are doing in terms of their progress? Uh, right now, I say I say just focusing on uh, learning the scheme, uh, di- di- diving deeper into the scheme. Uh, for me, I was able to play under Vic, Coach Vic, for uh, ooh, that's how you know I'm getting old. About, <laughs> about three, about three years. I say three years. Uh, I was able to play under Coach Vic Vangio, and um, like I said before, it's, it's a review. Like you're going, like it's OTAs, going over the playbook. And um, so it was, it was, I don't want to say it was easy, but it, it got it got better as time went on because you, you learn, you live and you learn, you see your mistakes that you've made, and then um, you don't make those mistakes again. Um, so for those guys, um, and in my eyes, they had they had really good year. Um, this, they had a really good year this past year. Um, so I'm excited to see what year two has for them, and they're going to continue to take off. Trey, he's, he's an animal. Uh, Chad and, and Devin. Those are really smart, really smart linebackers uh, behind us, and um, just watch them fly around every game. Um, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting this year to watch them. The Jaguars pick twenty fourth overall. Do you hope it's a defensive player? I always hope it's a defensive player. <laughs> always. No, um, oh, whoever whoever's uh, whoever's pick whoever we uh, pick in the first round. Uh, really, anybody. Um, I hope they have success and you know they have a great career. Um, it's only it's only so many guys that get picked up. Um, I was an eighth rounder, if y'all didn't know that. Um, <laughs> so you know, it's, I'm excited for these guys, man. It's it's a it's a dream come true to be able to to come in and play in the NFL. Um, as a as a young kid, that's what you dream of. You want to play, even if it's basketball. Like back in the day, I wanted to play basketball. I want to go to NBA, but um, just to play, be a professional yeah. in uh, the sport, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a blessing. So I'm I'm happy and I'm excited for those guys come Thursday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Bro, do you guys follow? Like we follow it so intensely, the draft, the draft. Do you guys follow that? I mean, do you guys pay pay attention like we do? Me personally, I don't. Yeah. I was undrafted, so yeah. I just I don't really yeah. keep up. Back when I was younger, I used to. Yeah, you know, yeah. I used to watch you know my favorite guys, but as I've gotten older, yeah. you know, once the guys come in, whoever we pick, um, you know, I just try and show them love and hey, welcome to the team, and then it's time to go to work, but. Personally, I don't really keep yeah. up with the draft. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you, but um, <laughs> I get it. But yeah, no, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see who's gonna who's gonna yeah. join and who's gonna uh, come in and work with us. All right, how's your golf game? Tell me about it. I'm not even going to lie on the radio. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but uh, my seven iron is my baby. Okay. Um, okay. Not too bad at chipping. Yeah. My yeah. putting game's the best though. I you like it, though, aren't you? Really good. You at kind of caught up in it. Short aren't you? game is really good. I'm yeah. not even going to lie. I'm, short game is good. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm hitting my seven iron off the tee box just, to, right, get, okay. just to get in play. Okay. My dri- okay. I, have a, I have a really bad slice on my driver. Okay. Um, so working on that, but um, but I'm enjoying it just to get out there and. Um, been able to hit a couple nice courses uh, in a club. I was able to mm-hmm. go and play, and um, right now I want to play the uh, stadium course. I'm looking to play the stadium okay. course here pretty soon. Okay. Um, but just get just to get out there yeah. and and play and take your mind off of everything and just be outside and kick it with your guys. It's it's just a good time. So. Well, it's a tough course now. You play the ocean and the lagoon. They're both tough courses. Yeah, the ocean. Yeah, the ocean course was really nice. Was, I did. I didn't do too bad. Okay. Yeah. Was anytime, wind, anytime, anytime I had water hard? in front of me, I was able to hit over the water. So <laughs> that's good. I, I would say it was yeah. a good day for me. <laughs> well, Roy, when the wind blows on, I play a lot of golf. When the wind blows at the ocean course, yeah. it's tough, man. It's a tough course. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, I'm I'm curious to get your thoughts on on Trevor Lawrence. Uh, obviously had such a tremendous second half. What was that like from your veteran expertise, seeing kind of the struggles he went through and then seeing him come out of that? And then what are your expectations for what he can mean for you guys this year? Love Trevor to death, man. He's a he's a good quarterback, great person. Um, he's he's there every single day and he's working. He's He doesn't have much to say. He's a leader on this offense, uh, leader on this team. Um, got a lot of respect for Trevor. Um, with his weapons that he has, obviously we got we got rid now. So I'm excited just to see how he takes off and how he spreads the ball around. Um, there's playmakers all over the, all over our offense, so he's gonna um, he's gonna do great. He's gonna be great. 
You've mentioned Calvin Ridley. Y'all excited to see him get out on the field? Absolutely. I played against Rid back in uh, when he was in Atlanta. I was in Chicago. I played against him, and he's a playmaker. He does his thing. He's a, he's a crazy route runner. He's exciting to watch. And um, so now that he's on our team, I'm I'm glad he's on our team now. So I'm excited. One of our favorite shows of the year on our show is we do a toy drive for boy uh, for Big Brothers Big Sisters, and we've known Sarah forever. Um, it's a great operation. I mean, it, and I mean that sincerely, not because you're sitting here. People listen to this show have heard us talk about that. How did you get involved? I think it's so cool that you are. Tell us a little bit about your involvement with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Yeah, so I joined, um, I was in Chicago, I want to say in 2018 is when I first started working with Big Brothers Big Sisters. And um, I got interested just uh, based off the mentorship, um, just being a positive role model for a younger kid, you don't know everybody's situation, um, especially in school these days. You just don't know what anybody could be going through mentally. Um, so being able to just reach out and be a helping hand, like, hey, I'm here for you. If you need to speak, I'm here. You don't know what situation they may have at home. If they don't have, like, let's say mom's working at nighttime and dad's working, the, you know, during the day, it could be tough, you know, getting attention or – being able to talk to your parents, or if you're an only child, you don't know you don't know everybody's situation. Um, so just being able to be a, a helping hand, I really I really uh, enjoyed seeing that. That was their initiative, and and so I wanted to be a part of it. So um, for the past couple years, or my past few years in Chicago, I was able to work with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Uh, Jeremy was my guy. Mm-hmm. We always would connect and you know find different ideas. Uh, we had a couple of events we did with um, bringing some of the littles out and, you know, took them bowling and just being able to just have a good time, you know, leave all your worries, all your any you know issues you may have, leave all that behind you. We're going to have some fun. We're going to just, you know, be there to, to say it is okay, whatever you're going through. Um, but just the mentorship, I really, I really enjoy that. You yeah, know, I can, to see I can that see for your, young kids. I can see it in your face. It's real for you, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, it was something I wish I had, uh, you know, as a kid growing up, just to be able to tell somebody, hey, this is what's going on. You may not feel comfortable with talking to a teacher mm-hmm. or to a counselor, but, you know, someone that can actually relate to you, mm-hmm. you know, you can sit there and have a, a, a good, legit conversation. And so, um, you know, that's that's what stood out for mm-hmm. me big, with Big Brothers, Big Sisters. And, um, you know, fortunate enough, I was able to. I'm able to work with them here in, mm-hmm. in Jacksonville, so it's exciting. Yeah. Have you had a, a, a experience either in Chicago or here that's really touched your heart in terms of uh, you know with with the children and things like that? Say it again. I'm sorry. Have you had an experience, uh, whether it was in Chicago or here, uh, that that's really touched you uh, in terms of you know touched you emotionally in 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 terms of your interactions with these kids? Um. Not so much with Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Um, I will say that I've had um, talks with uh, BAM. There was a group called BAM in Chicago, uh, Becoming a Man. And um, just wor- it's just in a, in a, it's a program in, um, in schools where they're – and it's funny because I, these are kids that were just like me growing up. Like I didn't care about school. I didn't care about anything. And I was cutting up a little bit. Um, but just some kind of mentorship, you know, these kids were in this program and um, just talking to them is, like I said before, you don't know everybody's situation. Some some kids were, you know, I'm not going to go into everything, but some of the situations, was, it was just tough to hear. And I was like, man, this this is, uh, you know, I really wish I, I could do more to maybe help out. Um, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. No, I didn't get on. Not at all. Man, it, it's um, – BAM was a really good program that I was able to work with. I was able to do a few school visits out there, and that was a program that I feel like uh, emotionally I was really uh, attached, you know, connected with. Um, but Big Brothers, Big Sisters, man, they're they're great. I love them. I love I love what they're doing, and so I'm I'm uh, blessed to be a part of you know their their initiative. And it's got to be important, Roy, for your kids to see you give back because they're obviously going to grow up in, in a really great situation. And so they need to also be involved and see you involved with the community, right? Absolutely. Um, my kids are young, so we're, we're, uh, we, got, we got tiny kids. We got little babies. <laughs> but um, now as my, my six-year-old, um, I try and bring him around and try and show him what it means to give back. You know, uh, the lifestyle that an athlete at this level lives – um, not everybody gets to live that way. So to be able to show him, hey, that we need to give back as much as we can um, because there are people that do 
deal with, you know, tough times and hard times. So we uh, we try and make sure we instill that. Roy, the group in that locker room feels that way, don't they? Uh, they, they I mean, I, I mean, we're around them a lot. That that's a uh, that you're not alone in that, are you? I think you've got teammates to feel as far as giving back. I'm not trying to be corny here, but I mean, I I know the guys. There's a lot of guys like that, aren't there? Absolutely. I feel like I feel like it's just a good thing to 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 be out there in, in the city some some form of fashion just to, okay. like you said, give back, yeah. you know. Um, guys make millions of dollars in this league, so it's it's nothing for us to, you know, go out and, you know, feed the homeless or, you know, donate to, you know, a company that's, you know, feeding kids or donating clothes, something that some way, some way, form or fashion, you'd be able to give back in the community and show your face and, um, you know, let people know that, you know, we are here to, to back you up. You know, we got your back. The website is bbbsnefl.org. That's Big Brothers, Big Sisters, northeastflorida.org. The phone number, if you want to get involved, is 904-727-9797. Uh, we know Sarah very well. We know what you guys do. I knew Warren Grimes even before, God rest his soul. Uh, they, they kind of really got Big Brothers, Big Sisters going here. I think it's so cool that you're involved. I mean that very sincerely. And I love watching you and calling the games and being around you guys and uh I can't wait for this year, bro. I mean, I I'm like chomping it. I'm like you. I'm ready for off season to be over. Okay, <laughs> I, it's, it's hard. It's even harder for you guys than it is yeah, us. But man. I know you guys are excited. Absolutely, OTA. I'm 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 super like excited. Like we're in OTAs right now. Yeah, it's yeah. slow motion, but just to be around the guys again, being yeah. in the locker room, it's fun, man. Just to excuse me, yeah. see everyone's face and. Everyone's goal is just to win games. That's How, it. How's that new facility going to be? Looks good, doesn't I it? I mean, I haven't seen it yet. I've seen it just from the outside like yeah, everybody same, else. Same here. Yeah. But I'm excited. It's yeah. going to be It's going to be really nice. Roy Robertson here. Hey, man, thanks for stopping by. Congratulations on a great year last year, both individually and the team. I can't wait to see this year. Thanks Thank for you, guys. By. Roy Robertson Harris from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Back in a moment <laughs> on the program. Stay with us.